So what we're going to do now is give an introduction to Java monitor objects. And we'll talk about what monitors are. Monitors are a concept that have been around for a long time. And we'll explain how Java's support for built-in monitor objects can be used to ensure mutual exclusion and coordination between threads. And I'll also show you this very cool visualization model, which demonstrates visually how things work with monitor objects in Java. And I'll give you a somewhat contrived example of human known uses of monitors. It's not the world's best example, but it's okay. So a monitor is a synchronization mechanism that was designed in the early 70s. In fact, the paper corresponding to this by Pierre Brinch Hansen was published in 1973. It's interesting to see what else happened in 1973. The Sydney Opera House, the famous iconic Sydney Opera House was built then. And uh, here are some of the hit songs from 1973. I was in probably in uh, like seventh grade or something like that, 1973. And some of these songs are still, still popular. Uh, at least I would recognize them. You may or may not recognize them. But uh, that was what was going on in 73. So a monitor as a concept provides three capabilities to concurrent programs. And you can see here, we're going to visualize this. We're going to assume we're running on some kind of computing device that has multiple cores. Capability number one, a monitor ensures that only one thread at a time has mutually exclusive access to a critical section. So what that means is there might be a bunch of threads that are waiting to do their thing, but only one of them at a time can be here in the critical section, actually manipulating or reading shared mutable state. Second capability, threads running in a monitor can put themselves to sleep or block, awaiting certain conditions to become true. So you can see here, this, this guy is running, and then thread T1 decides, you know, I can't make any further progress. I'm trying to, trying to take an item from an empty queue or something like that. So that thread can elect to wait on some condition, and that's what is visualized here. So this is the main critical section. This, think of this as like the waiting room. And when you wait, you get over here and you kind of park yourself off to the side. And then that can allow other threads to come in and do some stuff to the critical section. Using the example of, of a thread safe bounded buffer like array blocking queue in Java, this would be a case where this guy, T1, thread T1, parks itself, waiting on the queue to be not empty. And then thread T2 comes in and it puts something into the queue and then thread T1 will be able to wake up and go on its merry way because it'll be able to get an item. And then another thing that a monitor allows is it allows a thread to notify one or more other threads that the condition or conditions they're waiting on have been met. So in this particular case, you can see that thread T2, as we just saw, did something like added an element to the queue, and then it went ahead and left the critical section, which then allowed Thread T1 to unblock on the wait queue, reacquire the lock, and get back in that critical section to do its thing. So those are the three primary capabilities that a monitor provides in general, irrespective of whether or not we're talking about Java or some other monitor implementation. So now that you've got a high-level overview of what a monitor does as an abstraction, as an abstract data type, if you will, let's zero in on built-in Java monitor objects. And as I mentioned, all objects in Java, and a record is not an object, so that's consistent, can be used as built-in monitor objects, and they support two types of thread synchronization. And you can read more about this type of a monitor if you go to the monitor Wikipedia page, and you read about implicit condition variable monitors. That's what Java supports. That's the kind of monitor that Java supports out of the box with built-in monitor objects. And this is just kind of a recap of what I said in the intro. You can have mutual exclusion, which allows concurrent access and updates to shared data without incurring the evil race conditions. And the reason that this works is because every Java object has a single intrinsic lock associated with it. That's what it's called. It's called the intrinsic lock. I sometimes refer to that as the monitor lock when we talk about the monitor object pattern. And another phrase that you'll hear very frequently is that the intrinsic lock has something known as an entrance queue. And the entrance queue, as you might expect, 
very much like the queue that the renter lock has that keeps track of threads that are waiting to get access to this critical section. And Java's execution environment, you know, the JVM or the Android runtime or whatever, supports mutual exclusion via an entrance queue and synchronized methods and statements. So we're going to learn about that in a second. And then the second thing is coordination, which allows computations to run properly, in other words, in the right order, at the right time, under the right conditions, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see here that what we're going to be able to do is have a wait queue. Here's the wait queue. And the wait queue has three methods, wait, notify, notify all. And those are exposed via the Java object class, which everything inherits from except for records. And every Java object has one intrinsic condition associated with it. So there's an intrinsic lock and there's an intrinsic condition. And again, the Java execution environment, the JVM, art, and so on, support coordination via this wait queue and the notification mechanisms therein that it inherits from Java object. Now, if you want to see the bigger picture, these mechanisms that are part of Java implement a variant of what's known as the monitor object pattern. And the monitor object pattern is a pattern that's documented here in Pattern-Oriented Software Architecture, Volume 2. And if you don't want to run out and buy this for all your friends for birthdays and, and holidays, you can go download a link to an earlier version of that paper that talks about the monitor object pattern that I wrote a long, long time ago, probably 25 years ago. The intent of this pattern is to sure, ensure that only one method runs within an object at a time, and it allows the object's methods to cooperatively schedule their execution sequences. Those are the two things, and that's basically mutual exclusion and coordination. <laughs> you can think about that as being the pithy intent statement for this pattern that covers those two capabilities we just talked about for monitor objects in Java. So just for kicks, let's take a look at a, a human-known use of a monitor. This is a little bit contrived, but it's, it's okay. And this is an operating room in a hospital. So let's say you need to go in and have your, your gallbladder removed, your appendix removed, or something like that. So the way it works is you, you enter and you go into like a check-in area, and you, you check in. And the way this works is that only one patient is allowed in the operating room at a time for, for safety reasons, right? And so you go in and the, the doctor or doctors operate on you. And let's say it's a long procedure, so they're not going to finish it all at once. I'm not quite sure why that would be, but let's just assume that for the purposes of my example here. So at some point when they've reached a point where they need to let you rest or they need to wait and do something else, so maybe it's an emergency room, so there's somebody of more importance that comes in who needs to be treated, you're going to go off to some waiting room over here and then the next patient comes in and they get operated on. And there may be multiple people kind of waiting around in waiting rooms while operations are taking place. But there's only ever one patient in the operating room at a time. And then, you know, once someone is done, they leave. And then someone in the waiting room could be taken back in and they could finish off the operation. So again, it's not a perfect analogy. I'm not sure whether, waiting, whether operating rooms really work that way, but it gives you the idea that you've got some critical section where the real operations are taking place on someone, and there's one of them at a time. And when someone is asked to go off and wait for the, for the next available opportunity for the surgery to continue, they go off to the side. So this is kind of like parking yourself on the condition objects. This one would be an example. You've got multiple conditions. Remember, Java only has one condition object per object. One, in, one intrinsic condition per object in the built-in monitor object implementation in Java. Okay, so that's the end of the introduction to Java monitor objects. At this point, you probably still wouldn't be able to do much with them, but at least you hopefully have the big picture view that there's this concept called monitors that have been around for, gosh, almost 50 years. And Java implements a variant of this called Java built-in monitor object.